I've been playing Black Flag again after almost 10 years, which is widely regarded by the AC community as one of the best games in the franchise. However, most reviews of Black Flag don't really mention the negative as well as the positive, which is why I wanted to review the game with a fresh perspective and see how well it holds up in 2024. But before we do jump into all of it, a very quick word from today's sponsor, Trust Dice. The world-renowned crypto casino, Trust Dice has your standard games like blackjack and other casino experiences, offering betting on a wide variety of sports, as well as esports, on games you'll recognise like Valorant, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, Rainbow Six Siege and more. On top of that, they also offer a great welcome bonus when joining up, as well as users being able to claim free crypto every six hours. They also have a ton of positive reviews across Trustpilot too, so you know that if you're using Trust Dice, you're getting a super safe experience. So if you're looking for some free cash, then sign up using my link down in the description. Back to the video. Twenty thirteen was the same year that GTA V and The Last of Us came out, and matching those games graphically, Black Flag still stands up really, really well. Now I am playing on PC, which will help no doubt, but whether I'm sinking on some glorious viewpoint or sailing into a dreamy looking bay, I am constantly smiling with just how fantastic this game looks, even whilst capped at 60 FPS on PC. Its location of the West Indies or the Caribbean islands are rich in colour with so many different settings. If you look at games like Valhalla for example, which don't get me wrong, I am a fan of, the colour scheme doesn't really change that much despite travelling across Norway, England and more. But in Black Flag, each location holds so much variety. We had three major cities, quaint towns, beaches, lush jungles crawling with wildlife, open seas chock full of sharks and whales, and even if you have no objective, it's just an absolute joy to explore. It's also really historically accurate too, be that period accurate ships, the buildings looking on point, or even the NPCs actually wearing time authentic clothes. Talking of NPCs, this world is full of them, just adding to the game's overall immersion. Our three cities of Havana, Nassau and Kingston all have a very unique and different feel to them too, and whilst they don't have such iconic landmarks say as London in Syndicate or Rome in Brotherhood, the fact we have three unique bustling cities to explore is amazing. You have to remember too, this game was initially made on the PS3 and Xbox 360, and for considering its age, this is absolutely incredible. There are loading screens in this, but only when arriving at major cities, which believe me, whilst I know that is unheard of in games today, at the time of release, this was a really impressive feat. And yes, I am old enough to remember this. The game's sound design is also fantastic, and I can't recommend more that if you can, you definitely should be playing Black Flag with headphones. The hustle and bustle of the streets, the noises of the jungle, the sounds of your feet across the rooftops, the world just sucks you in in every way possible. It's also worth noting that this was the largest Assassin's Creed game at its time of release, and was the next step up onwards from AC3. Whilst actually AC3 does have more landmass, overall when you factor in the sea, which does take up the majority of the map, the Caribbean is bigger, way bigger. Bigger, better, and with a stronger protagonist. Now I am going to keep this review largely spoiler free, but I will give you the premise. We play as Edward Kenway, several decades before the events of AC3, father to Hathen Kenway and grandfather to Connor Kenway, who is a dirty, stinking pirate. Controversially, our main man Edward also isn't initially an assassin or member of the Brotherhood either. The game's opening scene has Edward actually murder an assassin and take on his identity, who you later find out was betraying his fellow hidden ones anyway and going over to the Templar side. From there, we are then drawn into a conspiracy between the high-ranking Templars within the British and Spanish Empire, and I won't give any more information about the story specifics any more than that. Edward, to me, is in many ways the perfect gaming protagonist. He's kind of similar to Ezio, he's cocky, smart, funny, and incredibly confident, but as he is a murderous pirate and his main ambition is to get rich, it really adds a great shade to an otherwise normal main character, making you always wonder, am I actually playing as a good guy? Supporting Edward too are some very memorable side characters, and if I was actually ranking this game based on who has the best side characters, it would easily be Black Flag. 
We have our mysterious stoic Mayan mentor Atabai, there's Adewali who will shortly be getting a spin-off of his own, the cocky teenager James Kidd, the trusting fool Steve Bonnet, as well as perhaps the best gaming side character ever of Blackbeard, who totally steals whatever scene that he is in. Without giving too much away, Edward's personality and motives do change as the narrative pushes on, and let's just say we do eventually end up with one of the greatest Assassin's Creed heroes of all time. In fact, I do have to say, Edward is easily my favourite AC protagonist. In terms of the modern day storyline, things took an interesting and controversial twist. This is the first game without Desmond Miles, and now you're not even playing as a named character, you're playing as a faceless avatar. Everything is now suddenly in first person mode, and you're working for a new and fun version of Abstergo in their gaming department, where the story then unfolds. I won't spoil anything specific, but in my opinion, let's just say that the modern day storyline is easily the weakest part of the game. You can almost tell that the writers had no idea what they were doing with the modern day storyline just by looking at its length, which is barely even over half an hour long. There were some small parts that I liked, like locating messages and easter eggs of previous games, almost trying to play on your nostalgia from our time with Desmond, but overall, it's all pretty disappointing. Saying that though, as our time within the Animus is so great, the modern day doesn't personally spoil anything for me. If however, the modern day storyline is a big deal for you, prepare to definitely feel underwhelmed. Overall though, the storyline is a refreshing change, with Edward being so charming and selfish at the same time, and whilst Edward works with both assassins and templars, to him they are largely obstacles or pieces for him to use for his own gain. As the story unfolds, they do get more woven into the narrative, adding much more impact into the big bang of an ending. It is so refreshing for a change of the usual good guy routine, and for me, Black Flag stands at the very top of Assassin's Creed storytelling. Just to say guys, if you are enjoying everything so far, then a like and a sub would go a very, very long way. And now we move on to perhaps a more controversial discussion, and that is the game's combat. It's easy for I think most people to agree that the game's world, exploration, story, and characters in Black Flag are all fantastic, but with the combat however, it's definitely not so straightforward. AC3, in my opinion, has the most enjoyable combat of the entire series, and Black Flag comes in at a very, very close second place. Do note though that I say enjoyable combat and not the best combat. The kill animations in both games are utterly insane, providing multiple non-stop slow motion brutal finishes that will satisfy any gamer out there. Unlike the recent Mirage, which only gives you a sword and dagger combo, you do have some different weapons to choose from. You have double swords, fists, and your hidden blade on hand at all times, but you can also pick up heavy axes, throwing knives, a musket to use too, and Edward is the only assassin ever to carry four pistols, which makes for some really satisfying kills. Whilst that variety of weapons keeps things refreshing, upgrading weapons doesn't really feel much different. The difference between you using the starting swords or something way later feels pretty moot, which also leads me on to saying that overall the combat is kind of easy. In Black Flag, you have your standard attack, a parry, a break defense, and once you've parried, also an option to throw an enemy, and that's it. If you were to compare this to even the combat of AC1, a game made six years prior, that included way more mechanics like a grab, counter grab, heavy attack, defense break, dodge, and combo kill. I'm not saying this makes the combat bad, it's just not that challenging. I suppose you could say that actually it's kind of realistic in terms of how easily enemies die, which depending on what sort of combat you like is either a positive or a negative. It can also occasionally be a little messy when fighting multiple enemies, but to be fair, which AC game isn't? But the combat's biggest issue in my opinion is actually in relation to the sound. Often you'll be tackling a bunch of NPCs, doing the coolest parry and kill combo you've ever seen, and then you'll notice the sound cutting off on the final strike. It's not game breaking at all, but it definitely does take you out of it immersion wise. Overall though, despite the combat being straightforward, I think it would be difficult to find any other combat other than AC3 or Rogue just so darn entertaining. Boarding an enemy ship with your pirate crew and absolutely decimating the enemy with the most style humanly possible is something I won't find myself ever getting tired of. This leads us very nicely onto the pirate aspects of the game.
Now obviously what sets apart Black Flag from other AC games is its highly impressive and enjoyable naval aspects. Whilst we did have it in AC3, and technically in Brotherhood if you count that mission where you had a cannon strapped to a rowing boat, naval combat up until Black Flag all felt incredibly average for me. However now, it is near enough perfected. We are the captain of our ship named the Jackdaw, an impressive brig standing at 48 meters high, 60 meters in length and 11 meters in width. When sailing, you can actually feel the waves. The responsiveness of the ship is on point, as the sea will really throw you off course if you're not paying attention. There are also three different speeds when sailing. You have slow, mid-speed, and then travel speed, which wasn't in AC3, where the camera pans back to show you your ship from afar as you look out towards the open ocean. The actual naval combat itself is simple to learn but can still be tough. At the beginning you'll rarely come across much trouble as you can blast anything out of the way with your guns in a matter of seconds, but as time goes on things become a lot more challenging. You'll have to fight larger and more powerful ships, multiple ships at once, and may even come across other legendary vessels, really having to master everything the Jackdaw has on offer. You can use your cannons to bombard the enemy from afar, decide to engage in close quarters combat with the crew, or board the ship and take over the enemy instead that way. All of this, and there is a theme here, just keeps the naval combat feeling really, really fresh. The upgrade system too is vast, allowing you to customize the Jackdaw to suit your own playstyle. You might prefer faster ships for hit and run tactics, or just prefer to be heavily armored for weathering the storm and not moving a muscle. Ultimately, the choice is yours. And adding towards the game's realism, the design of the ships are totally grounded in history, as is the rest of the game, but there is even a dynamic weather system, meaning at times you have to deal with the wind, rough seas and storms, even before you come across an enemy ship in the distance. You'll often see NPC ships also battling against each other too, just adding authenticity, as well as looking absolutely awesome. Black Flag makes travelling to new places exciting, and not like you're just waiting to arrive at your next destination. Fast travel is there if needed, but if you're like me, you'll find yourself very rarely using it. It's easily the best gaming naval experience I've ever had, but when integrated into a solid Assassin's Creed, it creates a truly mesmerising time, living out the pirate life and the Assassin experience simultaneously. Now despite this game being so massive, both in size and the difference of gameplay, the stealth aspects in my opinion is easily one of the best in the franchise, something Valhalla, Odyssey and even Origins all did so poorly. Black Flag Stealth is in many ways similar to AC2, where it's all about concealing your location and using social stealth, blending with the locals or hiring a bunch of… ladies to walk alongside you. The setting of the West Indies actually complements the stealth incredibly well too, whether you're utilising the jungle or rooftops of cities to carry out assassinations, or hiding in giant leaves and luring enemies towards you. A good feature added into Black Flag, although simple, was being able to poke your head out of bushes, thus pulling enemies in your direction. Tools are a good staple of the game too, we have sleep darts, berserk darts and smoke bombs to achieve your end goal, all helping you manipulate guards to your advantage. Whether that be sending them to sleep to have other guards rush over to them, or using your berserk dart to cause the greatest distraction. You're also able to throw money on the ground too, making the local peasants take eyes off you as well. I will mention too that all of the tools are quite easy to obtain, you just follow the story, you don't really have to work to unlock them, for example like in AC2 with Leonardo or the Thieves Guild. This could be considered a good or a bad thing depending on what kind of experience you like. With the parkour, it's very similar to AC3, though in my opinion, I think it's a little stronger. AC3 tends to get a bit of a bad rep because of the supposed downgrade from the earlier games, and that's certainly a fair comment. Beforehand, you had more choice with your movements, and it was far more difficult to master, and in AC3, they removed some of the more tricky aspects, making parkour more accessible for the average gamer. With Black Flag, I think it's the map that makes the parkour feel like a slight improvement from AC3. The cities can largely be traversed entirely across rooftops, and they've clearly put a number of different paths along the way for you to follow, swinging round corners, being pulled up ropes, or just hopping across ledges. Within Edward's arsenal, he can side eject, back eject, cancel and vault, adding more variation to the path you want to take. Occasionally, the parkour can feel a little disjointed, with Edward not always moving exactly where you're directing him to go, but for 
for the most part, parkour in Black Flag is in the top half of parkour within Assassin's Creed games. Sure, it's easier to master with less choice than AC1, 2, Brotherhood and Revelations, as is the game's combat, but it's easily one of the most fun parkour experiences you can have in any AC game. Now there are still a few things that definitely deserve a mention, but haven't fallen into these first five categories. Another aspect of the game which they included from AC3 was hunting, where you'd find yourself taking out different animals like iguanas, monkeys, jaguars and more, and even sailing and bringing down sharks and whales. It added another dimension to the game, as well as being our primary way of gathering resources for crafting. It's a minor part of the game in my opinion, but a welcomed addition nonetheless. The soundtrack though in Black Flag is easily one of the best in the entire series, and that's even before mentioning the sea shanties. Seriously though, the only other AC game that I think beats the game's soundtrack is AC2, and sailing around while listening to the iconic classical scores made by Brian Tyler was just peak 2013. To this day, it's the only AC music that I listen to outside of playing the game, it's just that good. And like previous games, another aspect I also haven't mentioned is our hideout, which in essence is our very own private playground. Much like hunting, I'm kind of happy to have it, but it doesn't add a great deal to the game either, other than making you feel like you truly are the king of your own land. You can upgrade your island or village too, including things like a general store to buy items, and basically own your own whorehouse as well. Unlike the empire that Ezio builds, the buildings don't contribute any cash over time, so it kind of begs the question as to why you'd actually do it. I may as well just spend more money on upgrading the jackdaw instead. My one and only real complaint about the game, and you probably know what's coming, is those darn tailing missions. Yes, tailing missions are a staple in Assassin's Creed, and whilst yes, it can be fun to sneak through streets or stalk your enemies over rooftops, in Black Flag, tailing missions make up literally 25% of all missions. It's the one part of the game that just feels lazy in my opinion, and also the only part of the game that ever feels boring or tedious. With regards to the rest of the game's missions though, I don't want to give any specific details away, but many of them are absolutely iconic. Be that hopping between 10 plus ships during a storm, making your way out of a dense jungle, or chasing down a captain through an incredible parkour set piece, they will stay with you well after you finish the game. It's worth stating that Black Flag was a massive deviation in what the previous games used to be. Sure, of course, a lot of the aspects were very similar, but largely up until this point, we're used to exploring just a few close-knit cities, and now we have the whole Caribbean to explore. It was the natural next step up from AC3, and I'm really glad they took the game in this direction, although perhaps not everyone will agree with me. Another reason why people like this game so much is down to pop culture, or should I say the absolutely massive franchise that is Pirates of the Caribbean. I can remember seeing the first movie in the cinema when I was a young lad, so by the time Black Flag came out, playing as a pirate in a game was an absolute dream, and I was not alone. It's a bit like how AC Valhalla came out around the height of the TV show's Vikings and the Last Kingdom, it was just perfectly timed. Whilst we don't ever talk about the atrocity that was the Assassin's Creed movie, if they ever were to make a Black Flag movie, Charlie Hunnam would be the perfect casting in my eyes. So you can probably guess, but should you play Black Flag in 2024? abso fucking lootly Black Flag took everything that worked from the original games, parkour, stealth, the assassin life, and merged it with conquering the seas and an incredibly enjoyable naval experience. The heart of the game is the integration of land and sea gameplay, which no game in my opinion has ever come close to. This is two games merged into one, an Assassin's Creed Pirate Fantasy. It's easily truly one of the best AC games ever made, where in one of my recent videos, I ranked this game second out of the 13 mainline games. And whilst I don't even think it needs it, there is a lot of rumours about a potential remake coming, to which I say, bring it on. Do check out my rankings video, subscribe for more, and I will catch you legends in the next one. Until then.